Hey everyone, just wanted to uh, do a short micro lecture a little bit about the uh, creeds. They're this week's theological component of our class. And just to maybe clarify a few things about the creeds. For those of you who come from a creedal uh, tradition, and there's a few of you who do who recite a creed every Sunday. Uh, not many, but maybe even just one. Uh, but for those who come from a creedal tradition, the creeds are usually thought of as something like a what, like um, a precy or a um, a summary of the beliefs of the church. Uh, I would like to maybe push back against that a little bit. Really, at the beginning, when the creeds were being developed, and we have pretty good history of how the creeds are developed, where we can see even in second century work by like Irenaeus, he was a uh, second century father. And in his, re in his writings, he'll talk about things th that the church confesses everywhere. And then he'll say things like, you know, we believe uh, in, uh, in one God um, who created the world and is the Father of Jesus Christ, or say something like that. Um, and the language then, as, it, as the church tradition moves forward, then gets pu uh, picked up into the creeds. But what Irenaeus is doing is he's not, uh, he's not giving a, a summary of what the church believes. No more than Paul is giving a summary of what the church believes when he says, I've received from tradition and now I pass on to you that on the night that our Lord took bread, or uh, on the night that our Lord was uh, taken, he uh, broke bread with the disciples and you know does the, the tradition of, of communion or Eucharist. That's not a, that's not a summary of what um, Christians believe in 1 Corinthians. It's what it is. Is it's a. Um, it's really kind of like more of like an identifier. It's people who confess these things are Christians. People who are Christians see the world in this way. They say this is the real story of the world, and this is how we. This is the lens through which we think about everything. Um, and this is important. It's really important because I can think of uh, off the top of my head two theologians who complain about the creeds. They come from creedal traditions. And they complain about the creeds because they say, well, they, they, the creeds don't have enough information. They leave too much out. So, for example, uh, example Jürgen Moltmann in uh, The Way of Jesus Christ, uh, the book came out in maybe the 80s or late 70s, I think. Maybe, yeah, 80s. Anyway, he, he says, um, hey, you look at the part about Jesus in the creed, and how come it doesn't say anything about what he did when he was here? It's like, you know, Jesus, he died, raised on the third day, ascended into heaven. What about all the, you know, the, the healings and the exorcisms and all that? Well, Moltmann is, he, he's, I think, reading the creeds wrong. He's looking for the creeds to be like this, this summary of all the important stuff that Christians believe. Well, I mean, <laughs> if, if that's what the creeds are, then isn't it kind of weird that they leave out pretty much the entire Old Testament? I mean, it's like, it's like you go from Genesis to uh, the Gospels in the creed. It, the, there's not, what about the history of Israel? What about, you know, captivity in Egypt? What about all these things? Uh, the prophets, the kings, all that stuff. Um, and that's why I think it's really important for us not to think about the creeds as our, like something we can hold on to and say, this is what, you know, the, if you believe this, you know you're a Christian. Although I would say that people who believe the creeds are Christians. I think more importantly, the creeds help us um, sort of approach the world in a certain way. And for that matter, approach the scriptures in a certain way. Uh, we, we are the kinds of people who see the world as if this is the world's fundamental story, that there is a triune God. The triune God has spoken to us uh, in his son, Jesus, who lived, died, was resurrected, and then gave his spirit to the church. You know, that's the kind of people we are. When we read about God in the scriptures, that's the kind of God we're reading about. We're not reading about um, Allah. We're not reading about um, just... Um, Yahweh, as understood by our Jewish friends. We're Christians. We believe that Yahweh is um, a three-person triune God um, who's singular in will and yet uh, differentiated in the way that he's revealed himself to us uh, over the centuries. So that's just a little bit of something about the creeds. I mean, we'll, get, we'll do a little more next week on the creeds. I don't want you to think that I'm trying to promote some kind of it's really important for us to say the creeds or whatever. I, I, what, I want, what I want the creeds to be is for us a, um, a reminder of the kind of world that we live in. Um, 
if you think creedily, you think trinitarianly, you think uh, father, son, and spiritly. And I think that helps to correct a lot of the problems we have in the churches. A lot of churches overemphasize the spirit at the cost of knowing the father and the son. Uh, in the Western church, up until really the Pentecostal charismatic movement, I mean, we were just really Christocentric. It was all about Jesus, all about Jesus. And, and a lot of evangelical churches are like that. It's like as if the Father and the Spirit are somehow not as important. Um, if we think creedally, if we are Christians in the tradition of the creeds, then I think there's some reason to push back against that. And there's uh, some reason to think that, um, well, yeah, that the... the, the in order for us to know God, we need to know God um, in God's fullness, deeply as triune, as revealed across the scriptures. Um, actually, to Chris, uh, if you're watching this, some, some of what we're saying hopefully will Im impact your topic. You know, God of the Old Testament, God of the New Testament. Um, yeah, so thinking crudely, maybe next week I'll talk a little bit about the, um, so a little more about the history of the creeds, uh, how. Um, yeah, how they sort of came into being um, and why they came into being. But for now, let's just say this is not a summary. This is a worldview. All right, see you.